Hello and welcome back to the Desi Plaza TV. Uh, I am Apec Mulay and I'm a having a discussion with Professor Ravi Batra uh, from Southern Methodist University, Dallas, about the latest economic and political developments that are happening uh, post-election of President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, and we had last two segments, we have, we have covered some of his policies. In this segment, uh, I would like to really touch base with Professor Batra about what he said in last segment about government of America, the government policies making the rich richer. This is something eye-opening in a democratically elected society, the govern make, government makes the rich richer. So he has uh, discussed about in his book, End Unemployment Now, I would recommend the uh, viewers to please purchase your copy and try to understand it. But still, I would like to hear from Professor Batra, when you say the government policies make the rich richer, please explain it to our viewers, you know, what, how, how, how does this happen? Means, and if this is happening, this is something, it's a failure of democracy. Yeah. That you see, the government. <laughs> see, the government, I, I have shown, as I said uh, earlier, 95% of the government budget deficit, 95% okay. of that goes into the pockets of the very rich. Okay. And the poor just get 5% benefits, but they are paying uh, one third of the tax revenue comes, or, or maybe more, comes from the very poor. They get 5% of the benefit, pay one third of the tax, one third of the tax to the, to the government. So the, the government policy makes the poor poorer and the rich the richer. And see how, see how, how, how it goes, what happens. First of all, let's look at history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the, during the 1940s, the United States, the U.S. government had huge budget deficits okay. to fight Hitler, right, to right. fight that war, Second yeah. World War. Yeah. And we find that the rate of profit was around 18% of equity capital. Okay. Very high, incredibly high. In other, in other words, it's like earning 18% return on your savings, oh, okay. on your investment. Uh -huh. It's incredibly high. Yeah, yeah. That was 18%, and we know that the federal government had a huge budget deficit. Okay. Now, since, nine, since about 2007 or 8, the budget deficit had jumped even more. Yeah. It's even bigger now. Yeah. And I read an article in New York Times, and I cited that article in the book, which shows that under President Obama, mm -hmm. the rate of profit is at, at its all-time high in history. Okay. So the same thing that happened in the 1940s uh -huh. is happening now, and what's the common denominator? Huge budget deficit. And that histori history supports my viewpoint that the government can money, vast majority of that government money was, goes into the pockets of the rich. Now, how else, how, and there is another way in which the Federal Reserve helps the rich. Oh yeah, Central Bank of America helps the rich, okay. As I said earlier, when productivity rises faster than wages, supply grows faster than demand, there is overproduction, and layoffs occur, poverty rises. Now, if this overproduction keeps occurring, mm -hmm. then the rich people, their profits will fall. Yeah, that's true. Right? Right, too. Because they need people to buy this. Buy you cannot buy. Buy. You cannot buy. So what does the Federal Reserve do? They cut interest rates sharply, so that the poor people borrow money. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. They borrow money and buy these goods produced by the richest people. So the rich people get their revenue. They're, they get their revenue because they sell out everything. But productivity is rising, wages are not. So that means the entire fruit of productivity goes into the pockets of the rich mm -hmm. with the help of the government money. So you mean to say that not just uh, the Central Bank of America, in the European Central Bank is negative interest rate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, they're, uh, they're all doing the even governments, uh, the central banks around the world I'm seeing, they're cutting down the interest rate, so that is to lure the people into borrowing. So, around the world we are having this, this problem that the system is rigged in such a way that the rich just keep getting richer and richer. And everybody knows, and, and the government is making them, is helping them. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> not only that, these banks, they lend money to the poor and the middle class. Right. They are getting money free from Federal Reserve, uh -huh. nearly around 0%, maybe 0 0.25%, 0.5%, right. but they're charging 15 to 20% interest rate from the poor and the middle class. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. 
That's so true. their return on investments is such a huge huge yeah yeah <coughs> and then how, how do we know it's huge well the ceo <laughs> of one bank makes 100 million a year yeah and he complains my i did not get much raise this year i was i didn't have any, have any bonus he complains about it. In fact, I remember when we had the big bailouts of the banks after yeah. the financial crisis, there were golden toilets made for <laughs> the for one of the bankers. And this this is ridiculous. What's it's, ridiculous. it's just ridiculous. So it's the government yeah. which is making them rich. And then the same government complains. I've heard President Obama complain a lot and Mrs. Clinton complained about it in her uh, uh, debates with Mr. Trump. She said, we don't know how the rich are getting richer. Well, this is the reason you are making them rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> and you true. don't even know about it. So now coming back to President-elect Trump and his policy, now we have said all those problems. How is Trumponomics going to fix this problem? So what do you see Trumponomics doing now okay. to fix them? For Trumponomics to really work, I have offered short term some reforms in the sh uh, uh, which will work in right away. Employment now in your book. Okay. In this book on unemployment yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And by, by the way, the, the main part p title is how, How to, to eliminate, eliminate joblessness, joblessness debt, and poverty in bold words, in bold words, despite Congress. Congress. So, Mr. Trump does not need <laughs> his Republican and Democratic friends. He can still use his Twitter <laughs> to get his Twitter message is enough. <laughs> Twitter is enough. Twitter is enough for him. Twitter is enough for President-elect Trump. Yeah. President yeah. Trump, you're hearing me. Please buy this book or get this book and please get this policy implemented. You don't need your friends from the other parties and you can get the work done from Americans. Please do read this book. All right. So what I've shown in, if th if the coming president uh -huh. does certain things, uh -huh. he or she, well, in, now it's he, he could, he can cut poverty in half in America. Okay. In, in, in half in just one week. One week. One week is... President elect Trump, one week you can cut poverty in America in half. Isn't that a good way to <laughs> put it on Twitter? It's going to get a million more likes, I'm sure. Please tweet it. One week, one week solution to poverty. This yeah. is what you do. Okay. Without the help of Congress. A law was passed by Congress in 1987. All right. The year of the greatest stock market crash. Uh -huh. They were panicking, so they passed a law. They said that FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, can open its own bank. Okay. You know, the banks were failing. Uh -huh. So they said, you know, the FDIC can uh, make those banks solvent by opening, by combining them together and opening its own bank. And so this is what the FDIC has been doing since 1987. Whenever okay. a bank fails, they invest money in it, but then they sell it back to a very large bank. Right, to make a profit. No, not for them. Uh -huh. The profit goes to the large bank. Okay. They have put money. In. Right, right. right. <laughs> so govern, people's money goes in, and, and then they make the profit. profit. That's right. So That's this kind of socialism. No, <laughs> corporate socialism. <laughs> corporate socialism. Corporate socialism. <laughs> That's okay. what I said. The government is making the rich richer. Okay, okay. So they have been making these insolvent banks, fa failed banks, solvent by putting money, and then they sell it back to very big bank okay okay and that the big bank makes the profit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what i've suggested is this mm -hmm. okay make the bank this bankrupt bank solvent keep okay. it open for three years uh, that's what the law says up to three years the insolvent or the failed bank can be can remain open let's call it the fdic bank FDIC the bank. bank that the fdic took over made it solvent let's call it the fdic bank once this bank has become solvent, then the FDIC bank can also borrow money at nearly 0% rate from the Federal Reserve. Right, very right. right. Like other banks. Like, like other, other banks. banks. Yeah. Then just charge 5% interest rate on credit card loans, which are such a huge burden yeah. on the poor and the middle class. That's true. That's the true. poor and the middle class are paying 15 to 20% interest on those loans right. if you char charge them just 5%. First of all, their debt burden will yeah. will sink, will That's simply almost vanish. Very true. So that will raise their living standard right away. Yeah, from 15% it comes to 5%, just 10%. 10% benefit in the pocket. Right in the pocket. So if you have a yeah. debt of ten thousand dollars, yeah, yeah, 10% of that. 10% of that is a thousand dollars. Your income goes up by a thousand dollars right away. Very right. Which is. 
and you for can the use poor, it from productive use from buying uh, some other good well, things. Well, that's what I'm coming yeah, to. Yeah. Which is a huge help to a poor person. For exactly. the rich person, for $1,000 that means nothing. Right. But somebody who can't even put food on the table yeah. for the entire family, yeah. $1,000 is a, a lot. It's a lot, yeah. Very true. And this will cut poverty in half within one week because it takes, actually it takes three days for the FDIC to make a failed bank solvent. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That will cut poverty in half in okay. just three days or at the most one week. Uh -huh. Then at the, the next time, then next the President Trump can do is to raise interest rate for the retirees. Okay, yeah. This, yeah the yeah. retirees are getting half hammered a percent, yeah, yeah. being hammered by yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm suggested the government borrows money, long-term money at 3%, 3.5% rate. Why not? give those get that rate to the CDs of retirees, raise their earnings from just half a percent to three and a half percent, and that will raise the Do you mean to say the benchmark interest rate should go up, or or how can just the retirees? No, no just the bonds. The government buys, the government sells bonds to the retirees. Okay, okay, at a higher rate. At a higher rate, just five percent CD, they right. give them three and a half percent. Makes sense. Whereas makes sense. that five percent CD from the bank will get them half a percent, yeah. so that, that will help the retirees. Okay. Third, eliminate the trade deficit with China and many uh, and other countries. Now, Mr. Trump is talking about imposing tariffs. That will certainly do that, but tariffs are not popular nowadays. Tariffs will invite trade warfare. Yeah. So what the country can do is to manipulate the dollar. China manipulates its, its own currency, let's manipulate the dollar. And by manipulating the dollar, we can encourage our exports and raising exports without reducing imports. Right. See, this policy. President Trump, these are some brilliant solutions. <laughs> you have been complaining about China as a currency manager. Do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. Let, let's show you. China, we also can do what you can do. Yeah, exactly. Let's manipulate our currency. Right. That, that's the way to do it. Exactly. We manipulate our currency also, whether we have negotiations with other countries or not, trade negotiations suffer, or they could take a long time, these trade yeah, negotiations. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And definitely. people would suffer in the process. Yeah. Just manipulate the currency the way other countries do right. to act, promote their exports. Europe is doing it. They, have, also they, have, doing negative, it. they have negative interest, interest rates yeah. to bring the euro down. Right, 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 right. Yeah, China yeah. is bringing yuan down. In fact, negative interest rates are hurting the consumers in oh Europe. Yeah. They are ignoring those, thing, those things. Yeah, it's hurting the economy. Everything for the rich. Everything, everything for, for the rich. Right. So, so let's manipulate our currency and we can eliminate our trade deficits with all these countries uh -huh. by increasing our exports sharply. Right. That will revive manufacturing and people would have higher wages. You know, one, one, one good thing that I see, foresee from your trade policy that you're prescribing is that when each country holds other countries' debt, you know, sovereign debt. You can eliminate wars from this that's world. Right. <laughs> no one will invade other countries because you own their debt. <laughs> you see, that's a brilliant solution to yeah. get rid of your wars. Yeah. So, President Trump, you can get along with all countries in the world, you know, and you can have a fantastic uh, recovery of our economy. These are some brilliant solutions that Professor Batra has offered in End Employment Now. Please uh, do read this book, and I hope that your followers at least would remind you that this solution has some brilliant ideas for you and I, I hope that these ideas would benefit the entire and will make you a president uh, that who has been elected who has bring about you will become as famous I believe like FDR, FDR uh, Franklin yeah. Dinar Roosevelt he was the president during the depression that really uh, helped uh, America and I believe it's a time that we are in similar situation and we do need some bright ideas and since you, you yourself are a successful businessman, you know that a business needs not just producers, but also consumers. And we have to re regenerate our consumer purchasing power. So we'll have more discussion with Professor Batra in the final segment of this interview. And uh, uh, please stay tuned and listen what Professor Batra has to say. Thank you so much, Professor Batra, for your time. And we have a commercial break. Okay. So we'll thank you. Fine.